Today, I want to do something different. Uh, do you guys ever find yourself remembering something from your childhood or your younger years, specifically something you watched and you try Googling it or searching it on YouTube so you can find it? Well, that's the inspiration behind today's video. I've been a fan of Saturday Night Live since the mid 90s. I remember a skit that Will Ferrell did back in 1997 where he impersonated Styx's as member Dennis DeYoung. And the premise of the skit was that he was hawking a compilation record. The idea of the skit was to to highlight songs that harm the artistic integrity of some of people's favorite bands. Now, I don't necessarily agree with all these picks. I'm surprised that even some of them made the list, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So I thought in today's video, I'll play parts of the skit and tell you little stories about each song featured. I'm Dennis DeYoung, lead singer of the rock group Styx. And that was our smash hit, The Best of Times, a song that turned a respected art rock quintet into an easy listening laughing stock. <laughs> you can hear that and other career destroying hits on an amazing collection called Songs That Ruined Everything. You'll get dozens of songs which signaled the beginning of the end for many formerly cool artists, including Abracadabra by the Steve Miller Band. Abracadabra would be the title track from the Steve Miller Band's 1982 album. It would spend two non-consecutive weeks at the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It would prove to be the biggest hit of Steve Miller's career and the group's last top 10 hit in the U.S. Dancing in the Dark by the boss, Bruce Springsteen. I always remember this song being a huge Friends fan, and it featured a pre-Friends fame, Courtney Cox, who appeared on stage dancing with Bruce Springsteen. Interesting fact you guys may not know was that Cox was working for the video game publisher Bethesda during the earlier part of the 80s. And, you and Do You Think I'm Sexy by Rod Stewart. All proceeds from the song were donated by Rod Stewart to UNICEF, and at the time of releasing the single, and it having an enormous amount of success, Stewart drew criticism for its disco-like sound, but he would answer back that groups like the Rolling Stones and even Paul McCartney released disco-influenced tracks. The song would also be co-written by Vanilla Fudge drummer Carmine Apice, and he had originally come up with an arrangement that was initially rejected by Stewart. I'm sure we all remember the moment we lost respect for one of our favorite artists. <laughs> now you can relive that moment again and again. The world's greatest rock and roll band and they give you this. Yeah, yeah, Harlem yeah. Shuffle by the Rolling Stones. So ahead of releasing the song Harlem Shuffle, the Rolling Stones made an announcement they were going to be doing a cover of the song. So shock jock Howard Stern got on the air and announced he had stolen a copy of the new Rolling Stones song. In reality, he hadn't stolen it or even heard it, but he got his sound guy Fred Norris to do a cover of Harlem Shuffle in the style of the Rolling Stones and pass it off as the real thing. But this is what Fred had recorded never hearing the Stones' original song. The rival stations were all pissed off because they were like, "Why did you give Howard Stern that record? Right. We How did play he music. get it? He doesn't even play music." 1986, we actually did this—the wow. Harlem Shuffle hoax, they called it. <laughs> Yes. This was the only song of Yes to top the charts in America. The song would be primarily written by guitarist Trevor Rabin, who admitted coming up with the track while he was on the toilet, telling an interviewer he wrote the whole thing from beginning to end. Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. Hey, this one ruined two reputations. Say 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 would be released on Paul McCartney's album Pipes of Peace, which came out in 1983. A crazy stat, after its release in October of 83, Say 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 became Jackson's seventh top 10 hit inside of 1983. And of course, Van Halen Jump. This song originated back to 1981 as guitarist Eddie Van Halen had come up with a synth riff, but was originally rejected by his bandmates. When Van Halen were in the studio for 1984, the group's producer, Ted Templeman, would tell the band to go through some unused ideas and one of them was Jump. Frontman David Lee Roth would recall seeing a news report about a man threatening to jump to his death. Roth thought that one of the onlookers at the event would inevitably yell, go ahead and jump. We built this city, we built this city by Jefferson Starship. 
This song was ridiculed upon its release, but the funny part was it was never supposed to be so terrible. It would make many worst of lists for the 80s, and the song's lyrics were supposed to be a commentary about the decline of live performance clubs in Los Angeles during the decade. However, I want to point out there was numerous references to San Francisco and New York as well. Invisible Touch by Genesis. Phil Collins would claim that he didn't think Invisible Touch would be a hit. It would top the charts in America, and in a funny twist, it would be succeeded in the number one spot by former Genesis singer Peter Gabriel's song, Sledgehammer. We didn't start the fire by Billy Joel. Billy Joel would criticize the song in 1993, telling an interviewer, take a song like We Didn't Start the Fire. It really wasn't much of a song. If you take the melody by itself, terrible, like a dentist drill. Apparently, the skit would air the same night that Dennis DeYoung's father had died, according to guitarist James Young. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Story. Sticker.